morning everyone and welcome back for another episode of Spark Compass, the series where we talk about all things marketing. Joining us today is Jennifer Baker, who works as a part-time professor at the college while running her own marketing agency. Today we'll be talking about content creation. Well, Jennifer, thank you for joining me on our content creation episode of Spark Compass. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> and for people who maybe don't know you, would you mind giving a little bit of an introduction to yourself? Sure. My name is Jennifer Baker. I am a teacher here at St. Lawrence College in the INC and DNC program. I teach social media strategy and social media content creation. That's not at all, but okay. <laughs> Close enough. Mm -hmm. Close enough. Um, and obviously today we're here to talk about content creation mm -hmm. and its impact on marketing. So maybe the first question that I could ask would be, what is content creation? Content creation allows social media to exist. So without content on social media, there is no social media. So it is everything that's posted on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, uh, LinkedIn, you name it, that is where the content lives. And that plays a role in marketing by sharing the story of a business, you know, bringing awareness. How would you describe the role of content creation on marketing? So content creation sometimes get a, gets a little bit fuzzy or a little bit confused. Um, Content creation is about, is about a customer and about the customer journey. And content creation is meant to um, help customers through their journey, be it that they're at the beginning, middle, or end. So providing um, valuable content, educational, um, edutainment, entertainment, and everything in between. Um, but content marketing has the customer at the center. Mm -hmm. And so content creation, like you said, is very customer-centric. It's driven towards something that could engage or catch the attention of the people who are ultimately going to do something about it. Yeah. So is there maybe a step-by-step -step or a process that you like to follow to make sure that the consumer stays in mind when creating content? So something that I teach in my content marketing class is problem solution content. Mm -hmm. So it's usually a grid and and it goes problem, solution, content. And it's looking at the problems that the consumer would face and not the company, which sometimes can be, a, students sometimes get a little bit uh, confused on. Um, for example, if you are a physiotherapist, um, the problems that your customers may face, they may have back pain, they may have neck pain. So that's the problem. What's the solution with that? What's that content? Could it be a blog? Could it be a video? Could it be a carousel format that you're helping your customer through um, providing them value with that content. Is it a stretch? Is it um, different types of food? Is it more water? What can you provide to them to make their journey better or improve their journey? And there's different forms of content that can be used for things like that. And then we had a discussion earlier about user-generated content. Mm -hmm. So would you maybe want to go over some of the more popular types of content that can be used? So certainly um, the most popular type of content at this point is video. Um, you probably have seen it or maybe you engage with it uh, on TikTok or Instagram Reels. Facebook has a version of Reels now. Um, LinkedIn has LinkedIn Lives. It's video is everywhere. Um, and YouTube is also synonymous with video. And a lot of people use um, video, sometimes without strategy, but... Um, that is a big part of content at this point. Other types of content are more simple or simplistic, so it can be videos, it can be graphics, infographics. Um, blogs are another important type of content where you can kind of hive off some of the information in a blog and make them into more a digestible format for social media. And then there's user-generated content as well, which I um, always kind of put at the forefront with my customers and clients. Right. And user-generated content... Could you maybe elaborate a little bit more on that? So user-generated content is content that is created by a customer or a client without an exchange of money. So separate from an influencer mm -hmm. where they're compensated for a photo or a video or a campaign, user-generated content is simply a customer who's just so delighted with their customer journey that they post a picture to Instagram, they tag your company and say, I love this company so much. Here's a picture of me at a restaurant. Here's a picture of me kayaking. Here's a video of me, you know, going for a hike using these shoes. Um, that is number one type of content in my books. Right. And are there maybe rules to using user-generated content? So in terms of rules for user-generated content, 
if they're tagging your company, you know, what I do in my own practice is I'll reshare it. So if it's a share to a story or a retweet um, or sharing to a page, I don't necessarily ask. I will always reach out and say thanks so much for sharing and then I will, I will share in the appropriate manner. Um, if I start to take that content um, out of context, mm -hmm. I will always reach out and say, can we use this content with your permission? So oftentimes we will take it offline if that's something we want to use in a larger campaign. So if you're going to keep it intact, you're fine to use it, but when you start to mm -hmm. mince and dice it in the pieces is maybe when you should start asking for permission. Absolutely. Awesome. And there are several forms of content. As you mentioned, you have video, you have infographics, you have user-generated content. Is there maybe a perfect ratio or a mix that people should be aiming for? There is no perfection in social media. There is no perfect ratio. Um, the ratio that I will discuss um, when managing any type of content is sometimes the 80-20. So 80% of the time you're going to be providing valuable content to your customers um, and 20% of the time it's more of like a hard sell. Um, that's the ratio that I often I go towards um, rather than, you know, 10% should be video and 30% should be um, photos. It's also important to look at your analytics. So figuring out what works best for uh, your customers. Mm -hmm. So you may find that there's more reactions on a simple infographic than there is a video. So you need to adjust based on your customers, based on the industry that you're in, um, and always be learning about your customers and the industry and even what's going on with social. And because consumer habits tend to change fairly frequently, it's not something that you can just one and done, post, leave it, never think of again. Mm -hmm. um, so then if you were to try something new or you're going through and you find that content's not doing as well as it used to, is there maybe something that can be done to assess or modify or understand why your posts are, aren't getting the engagement that you were hoping for? So I always look back at the analytics mm -hmm. and I say, you know, what has been performing really well? and what has not been performing really well, and adjust. And the one thing I like to emphasize is it's okay that things may not be going well because things are always changing. It's not a perfect science at this point because we're always working with new features and new tools. I'm sure if you've opened up Instagram in the last two days, there was new features and you go, yeah. oh, I didn't know these were here. Um, and that happens all the time. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly adjusting what it is that we have to do to provide that best experience mm -hmm. for the customer. And trends, I know, is something that we also talked about <laughs> before the cameras began to roll. And they are trends because they, they come and they go. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can reframe the question then as when trends are upcoming, is there a way for small businesses to stay ahead of the curve and either anticipate them or make sure that they're not missing trends that could otherwise get them engagement? So trends <laughs> are trends. Um, so customers are, sorry, businesses can follow trends. It's not something that I always really push because a lot of people aren't comfortable with following trends and especially if you've opened up TikTok or Instagram Reels and people are dancing. Um, they are a younger clientele mm -hmm. and I often will say to my clients, I'll say, is this your clientele? Like, is your clientele dancing? Like, is this, are these your people? And they'll say no. They'll mm -hmm. self-identify and say, no, these aren't our people. And I said, okay, let's leave this trend. There might be something up and coming that you can participate in that's going to make more sense. Mm -hmm. So every day there's going to be a new trend, but you're going to have to evaluate and determine, are these our people? Is this uh, content that we're posting, be it a video, is that going to be valuable? And if it's not, just leave it move on. There's going to be another one in 24 hours anyways, so it's okay. <laughs> so if you miss a trend, don't panic. Yeah. And try again to keep your consumers in mind. Yes. So if you're you know, advertising to grandma, grandma's maybe not going to be dancing, mm -hmm. and that's okay. There are some dancing grandmothers though, so yes. you never know. <laughs> Fair enough. So when in creating content, everyone has a different style. Um, like at Spark, we tend to use calendars, so we can mm -hmm. do a general overview of the month kind of look a bit at our content mix. For someone starting out advertising their small business or marketing their small business, do you recommend any of these strategies like using a calendar or any resources or processes that you think they should use to make their life easier? So when businesses are starting out, I usually tell them don't 
get overwhelmed. Don't get too far in. Mm -hmm. First of all, they think they need to be on every si single social. Um, so Facebook and Instagram always seem to be the most popular at this point. TikTok's getting in there too. Um, so don't overwhelm yourself. Pick the platform that you can manage the best and the one that resonates with your audience. So once you've kind of narrowed it down, um, start to determine your content pillars. Mm -hmm. What are the key messages that you want to get across on the platform? Is it that you're eco-friendly, sustainable, and provide you know children's clothing? But what is it that you want to convey? Is what I usually tell people, and don't get overwhelmed. And don't also get stuck in perfection, because mm -hmm. sometimes you've just got to do it. It's OK to be vulnerable with your audience mm -hmm. and just say, hey, I'm new starting out with this. I'm a new business. Let's see how this goes. And oftentimes, it's that authenticity that really resonates with the audience. Mm -hmm. So it's not always a bad thing to state that you maybe don't know what you're doing, maybe to also ask for Mm -hmm. thoughts from the consumers on whether they want to see the content that you're generating. Yep. Um, and that's a really good point is sometimes people find that their content they say is not working. And I, I push back and I will say, well, what do you mean it's not working? And they will say, no one's commenting, no one's responding. And then I will ask them, well, have you asked them any questions? And they'll say no. So oftentimes, um, business owners, if they're creating their own content, they get, they almost build their own empire, mm -hmm. and they forget to ask their customers basic questions. Right. So you know, what top do you prefer? And if you're going for dinner, do you want red wine or white wine? Very simple things where you can put the customer first, mm -hmm. and then kind of sneak in your product, and then sneak in your service offering. And I always compare it to my. Um, when I'm talking to my students in my class, I'll say, have you ever been on a, on a date? And most of them have. And have you ever been on a really bad date? And some of them have. And I said, that bad date, you know what they probably did? All they did was talk about themselves mm -hmm. all night. And then you would get up from that chair and you'd say, that was awful. That person didn't ask a thing about me. They don't want to know about me. And I don't want to go out with them again. And I relate that to content marketing because that means they haven't put, you know, that person mm -hmm. first. They haven't put the customer first. So ask your customers questions, mm -hmm. you know, and that is a really great way to get engagement um, out of your content marketing. And content creation then can be referred to as a date. So maybe a good date has got a formula of you meet, maybe they open the door for you, they pull out your chair. It's just very basic small things, you split the bill, share a dessert. Mm -hmm. So when you're creating content, writing a post, is there maybe a sort of, not a magic formula, but something that can be used to keep everybody on track with the, the writing? Oftentimes I'll say speak in very plain language. And if you're new to content marketing or even asking questions, if you think, oh my gosh, I haven't asked my you know, Instagram people or my Facebook people a question in five years, it's okay, it's okay, you, it, you've got time. But what I like to start out with is giving them choice. So you might say, hey, we have two t-shirts. Do you like the red one or the blue one? So where they can choose very quickly, red or blue. Mm -hmm. Once you've developed that audience is where you can start to ask more open-ended questions. So you might say, what's your favorite color of t-shirt? And then open-ended, they will provide that feedback to you. So that's generally kind of the, the formula, I would say. Plain language, start simple, and then kind of work into more open-ended subjects or questions. So catch their attention, engage them, and then they might be a little bit more willing to actually participate without being prompted. Absolutely. And something I've noticed with a lot of small businesses that I've worked with is they're afraid to reuse content. Not the exact same post, but they think if they mention something once, it can never be mentioned again. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. What is your take on that? Is it okay to reuse content? You can reuse content. Um, and you can, what I'd like to do is repurpose mm -hmm. it a little bit. So it's kind of like looking in your wardrobe of clothing and saying, oh, I've worn this top before, but how can I repurpose it with a different pair of pants or a skirt? Um, same thing for your content. So if you're talking about maybe, we're going back to the blue and the green shirts, but you can look at it and say, okay, I've already talked about these shirts, but maybe I need to style them a little bit differently and present them differently to the audience. Maybe it needs to be a video format. Maybe it needs to be um, a blog format or a different photo or a different photo background. But yes, you can absolutely reuse content. Um, 
but just don't copy paste. And that kind of goes for if you're managing multiple platforms, there are still a lot of people who think that they can cross post automatically. I don't recommend cross posting. At least customize the content to the platform that it's on. Um, and little, little details matter. So yes, I talked about it doesn't have to be perfect, but look out for those little details when you are you know, maybe on Facebook and Instagram and maybe LinkedIn. And you mentioned cross posting, mm -hmm. which would be when you create content, post it to different channels, but keep the exact same wording, Correct. use of emojis. Correct. Is there a time when it would be okay to cross post? I say no. No? No. Um, and the reason is I don't like cross posting, like the automatic cross posting, because I compare the different social media to different countries. Mm -hmm. So if you decide to take a vacation um, to Italy and you pack your bags, you get on the plane, you go to Italy, and then you say, I don't want to learn the language. I don't want to eat the food. I just want to be me. And that's how I feel when people say, well, I want to be on Instagram, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't get it. Like, I really don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. And they don't really um, learn what Instagram's about. That's, that's the part that annoys me, when people just want to be somewhere, but they don't actually want to learn anything about it. Um, so if you do want to use the same content, great. You can use it across different platforms. Just make sure to customize it and speak the language of Facebook or speak the language of Instagram. Okay. I'm going to throw a challenge at you. All right. A little bit of a forewarning. It's something that I like to ask everybody, and it can be tricky. So if you had to summarize content creation in about three points or less, how would you summarize it? Can I summarize content creation in one point? If you're able, yes. Honestly, content creation is customer focused. Mm -hmm. Keep your customer kind of in the center of kind of that marketing bubble. And every time you go to create something, say, would my customers find value in this? Mm -hmm. Will they be educated by this? or will they be entertained by this? And if the answer is no, press delete and move on. It's, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. um, and wait until you have that valuable content to share. So no mindless filler content. No filler content. Keep I always say quality over quantity, okay. always. <laughs> and then for anyone who's watching, would you have any final words of wisdom or tidbits of advice to help them along the process of content creation? Know as much as you can about your, your customers, your clients. Um, if you have a retail storefront, ask a lot of questions um, and listen to what they're saying because that will help create a lot of the content. So they might be asking about maybe different brands in your mm -hmm. store or how to do something or how a product actually works. So if you start to listen to your customers, they're actually gonna be giving you a lot of really great ideas and it's going to be targeted exactly at what they need so you know be at a retail storefront you're you know interacting with clients it might be if you're an e-commerce store it might be all the uh, questions or inquiries that you get look at those and review them and start to make an excel document or a google sheets with all of their questions and that's going to help to formulate a lot of your content so listen to your clients don't ignore them yeah if you see something happening again and again and again, mm -hmm. take note of it. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me again. It was thank great you. to have you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Spark Compass. Coming up next, we have a guest speaker from the small social company who will be discussing all things photography and videography. Stay tuned and we'll see you next time.